rolling, rolling, rolling. I've taken up the um, job of night interviewer. Get some interviews going for the um, six month anniversary of Occupy Sydney. And I'm actually really stoked to be sitting here talking to Rowan. Because Rowan is the first dude. I remember when I came down, I, I have a confession to make to Occupy. And this is because I'm an over honest person. And really it's probably no big deal when we get to the six month mark of the fact that I didn't rock up till day three. Okay. Keep it amongst yourselves. I feel a little bad because I'm not the, you know, like the original one. And to me, this is one of them because he was the first one I remember talking to when I was getting all angsty at the first GA because I wanted to say something. It was that, like, that virginism of an activist. And so, you, why did you, when, how did you get involved in Occupy? What was your, who were you before Occupy came? Before day three, before I met you, were you here day one? Were you? Uh, what was the dealio? I was here day one, yeah. and it was really by accident. I remember a little bit before Occupy Sydney started, um, looking on Facebook, on Al Jazeera, um, at Occupy Wall Street, and thinking, oh, that'd be. It'd be nice if it was here, or oh, wouldn't it be great to be able to go over to, to New York and participate in such an amazing thing? Yeah, I remember um, that one. And I remember being amazed that uh, it was just not in any of the mainstream media. You really had to search for it, <coughs> and just finding small updates here and there on Facebook. But then on the 15th of October, there was a rally for the refugee rights, and I went on that. Um, it was a march from the town hall to, I think we did a loop of the city and came back to town hall, and while we were there, well, some of the speeches were there, and you had to buy this newspaper, buy this, whatever. Here's a flyer for the next section, blah, 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 blah. One of them was for um, Occupy Sydney. Yeah. And I remember thinking, well, that's a bit closer than New York. It's a bit more convenient. <laughs> yeah. um, so we wandered up over. It was about, I think we finished the march about, say, one or something, and the uh, Occupy thing started about maybe two or three. Um, so we came over and uh, you know saw some people new and um, this is the GA and it came to you know do we want to occupy this space and it was a big consensus thing and, uh, and I remember you know some mates of mine just got out tents immediately and they were fucking on it and prepared and so we went home and got our tent came back in. Um, and then I think it was about 10 p.m. or something, the cops came and yeah. said no tents. And they made it very clear. <laughs> there was to be no tents. So what happened? You had to. You, you guys stood in the rain, I hear. That that night, you know, it didn't rain, so we, we just slept out, sort of as we do now. Um, because, you know, we've never had tents since that first, say, what, four hours. <laughs> Plus, we've never been camping in tents in South Wales, please. Um, but, yeah, and then after that, we ended up staying for the full week. Like, we went home. I mean, we yeah. slept at home two, seven months or something like that. Um, yeah. And then we got smashed, and that was very... Were you here for the smashing? Yeah, I was here, got smashed. Yeah. Um, Did you get arrested? Yeah, I, was, I wasn't charged, but I was, I was grabbed. I think I remember seeing you being carted. Oh, I think I might even have a photo of you, maybe, of being carted off, there's and a, like down the side there. Yeah, there's a video on YouTube of um, yeah. me, sort of, you can see the back of me interlocked with arms, and four cops grabbing from behind and pulling me off. Yeah. Um, and like, that's but uh, it's it's been an amazing thing, Occupy. You know, like it's um, much bigger and better than I could ever hope it could be. Um, and for me, the best thing about Occupy is the, is the community we've developed, um, and the friendships, and the camaraderie. That's it, the camaraderie. You know, it's an amazing thing, and I think it's um, like even if. Occupy suddenly died in the ass tomorrow. I don't think Don't know it won't. <laughs> yeah, it's like it can't. It, it just it will. It will it's like it fades away. But yeah, you come back and say, "Hey, your but bar." We, but even just in the on the not chance that it would, we yeah. would still have these friendships. And things, and that's oh, amazing. It's gonna, it is no matter until the day we die. It's like going to a party, like, or you rock up to a, mate's, yeah. a party. A party is a good example because you rock up and then all of a sudden there's like. like 
10 people who you know yeah. from Occupy and you're like, well, your party's been occupied. <laughs> but, <I> mean, <laughs> See you next time, folks. <laughs> but it's great because like that, that first week, I feel very lucky to have been a part of it and to have Hell experienced yeah. it. Um, that was amazing. It really was. like you'd, you'd walk away for an hour and you'd come back and there was something new or some new little project that was going on. Uh, what is it. your most funniest like the thing that you've just witnessed at Occupy, like that almost a blooper that just makes you hack your pants every time you look back and think about it. Um, I don't know if you Oh, that's a goodie then. Um, this is after hours, remember that. <laughs> I guess it would probably be all I'll say is um, to two different people involved with Occupy who have quite different points of view one trying to convince the other that violence is never justifiable <laughs> and the other basically saying that violence is a very legitimate thing uh, and part of the class struggle it was quite a tense moment I thought violence might actually occur in that <laughs> But to see these people on the opposite ends of the spectrum both fighting for the same thing, it, I don't know, maybe it was a bad example, you kind of have to be there. But. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's, that's the one that, that for you makes it, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah, no, we all have those moments. <laughs> I think you were there, actually. Oh! I'm not one of the people that way. No, no, no. no I was no. a witness upon but this occasion. Yeah. Well, that, was, that was quite. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, folks. There's another Occupy interview. I've still got a few more to do. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen. We're here at <laughs> Martin Place, Occupy Sydney, the original site. We're here celebrating these six months anniversary of Occupy Sydney and I am interviewing some of the old school downtown yeah, originals. Introduce yourself sir to the camera. Uh, well that's uh that's not really a very good interview you have to ask me like some questions first not, not okay. leave me alone to the camera. Let me get raw people. <laughs> All right let's just roll with some questions then. Well I'm I'm Alex. Yes. And uh, I'm from Spain, and uh, yeah, I call myself an occupier. Why do you call yourself an occupier? I call myself an occupier because uh, I have uh, occupied the uh, COVID space, because I believe in uh, uh, the ideals of uh, Occupy Sydney, uh, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And what are your... The thing is funny, I, I find it interesting when people say the ideals of Occupy. And for me, it seems to branch out. Uh -huh. So what are your, what are your say, top three um, things, of ideals of Occupy? Like, what are the um, ones that stand out for you? Like, the personal things that you want to really give voice to? Uh, well, I guess one is... Uh uh, equality or uh, like looking for equality or addressing inequality depends how you want to uh, see it. Uh, another one is uh, sustainability. Um, I guess uh, especially in the whole world but in the western world uh, the rhythm of uh, consumption of uh, resources and not just of that but uh, of uh, events in the in the city life that uh, dehumanize uh, uh, relationships and people and uh, uh, rest uh, meaning of that relationships and those events and uh, I think that uh, that meaning is very important and I'd say like the third one here yeah, would be uh, <coughs> relationships between people so that would be equality, sustainability, and relationships between people. They're really good, awesome, validated points. I think that uh, one of the 
first things I saw when I came here, I came, I think, the 16th or the 17th of October. Although afterwards I went traveling, I didn't uh, stay that much here. But uh, one of the things I uh, really, really impressed me was uh, the quality of the relationships between people and the meaning of all the, the, uh, the meaning of all the experiences that you could uh, have here in the occupying site. Uh, that uh, all those experiences triggered uh, belief in uh, the occupation and in, uh, in uh, each other. They, they do, they really did. Yeah. Well, they have for me. Yeah. Yeah. What's the thing that down at Occupy, within the, like the, those first few days, that just made you laugh the most? That you remember the moment where you just, you just laughed and laughed and laughed by watching something or being involved in something? Or? Uh, I, I guess, I guess, uh, going out, uh, going out to talk with uh, people. I uh, remember uh, waking up in the morning and going uh, with uh, rough Turks or with, uh, um, well, I don't remember, but uh, with someone else to try and talk to the uh, walkers, the, the uh, city dwellers. And I remember like having very good anecdotes uh, uh, in that, like I was trying to be more uh, sort of moderate and try to talk to different people and explain a little bit what I thought about Occupy Sydney and, and not be in a sense uh, too uh, aggressive in the contact of people, but my, my friend here, like Ralph, was like didn't really care and, and was like sort of uh, calling and yelling out everybody. Hey, have you have you heard about Occupy Sydney? And uh, I don't know that situation. I was trying to uh, make him uh, uh, understand the situation, but at the same time I was laughing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, yeah, people's different approaches to trying and to talk to people has been very amusing to watch. Yeah. What was your uh, most uh, funny moment of uh, of the first days? first days I just think uh, there's there's a combination of just different people I remember when the rallies were on and there was God oh, how many 200 people 300 people I don't know there was more just more, more. But yeah there was so many people and just like spanning around and you'd see um, I remember one Patti and this other guy and Patti I think had a blindfold on and the, and he was they were playing amongst the people trying to kind of catch each other sort of thing. No, they both had blindfolds on I think and they were trying to find each other and they were playing around the people and then you look over and there's um, you see Maddie and Mushy and they're, they're dancing away to somebody who's performing on the on the mic of band singing and just everyone really happy and talking to each other and just and, and that's one thing that I find is really funny now, and I've, I've learned a very valuable lesson, is that when you meet a bunch of group, a, a big group of people, and you're so happy and, and just full of joy and love for everything, you, you hug each other, right? And so now, when I go to a party or I come down to Occupy, I've got to hug at least 20 people and give them this big kiss on the cheek <laughs> and sometimes. And sometimes you rock up here and you're so not in the mood to be actually like, want to see people or talk to people you just you're in your own little happy bubble then it gets broken because you go oh i've got to give 20 people a hug and that's beautiful by the time you finish hugging everybody you're really full of joy of love again and you you have that flash of beautiful memories when you first met that person or why you like to hug them or this that and the other and i think it's things like that that get carried on that make me in particular want to come back and see these people who are just Fucking beautiful and amazing and have got their heads screwed on and we have the basic core fundamentals all in common you know you, like the story you said you got I mean the last guy said you got two different people from completely different backgrounds one's all love and the other one's all violence but their core values are the same <laughs> well I mean I don't think like violence is called values no it doesn't I mean I mean I don't believe that either but at the same 
when you get to the root of it all, you kind of believe that, that the same stuff is wrong. The same crimes against humanity is wrong. Well, I returning to love, like, and, and it's expression from uh, one another. That's one of the most uh, strong uh, uh, things of the occupation, and and that's like some sort of. Uh, like usually in uh, in cities, uh, you have like that distance between people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're used to uh, like. Uh, so uh, you, you, you don't express that love that freely. And that, that love found uh, a place here in the occupation and 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 uh, it did. It really and it, and it, it, well, felt, it, has. it felt like the place felt so free, like uh, of this uh, meeting of these people that thought I like and there were different uh, um, political views or whatever, but uh, I think everybody shared that that sort of freedom there in uh, self expression and uh, and that was, it felt really good to uh, be part of the occupation. You could, you could feel it, like there was a very it's strong... Still part of it. Very strong, very strong feeling. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we've got to keep alive, people. We've got to keep that going and consistent. And, yeah, so just come and visit us on, on our celebration. Come and reminisce and go over stories and how you've met someone or the thing that you found funny or the thing that made you the saddest, that made you had this epiphany of what it's all about. You know? Yeah, and, and come also and, and spend the night. <laughs> yeah, because man, it's, it's, it's just the night and, and you can like uh, uh, relive, uh, uh, re-experience uh, those moments of your mm-hmm. first occupation and, and have a grab of, not just of uh, sharing with these amazing people uh, Martin plays for, just for us, but uh, also for uh, uh, changing a little bit uh, your perception of the urban space and how it works and how we use it. Yeah. It's always there. Yeah. Be inspired. <laughs> That's what it's about, man. <laughs> man, rock and roll. Over and out. Peace. <laughs> Hello fellow occupiers and fellow beings I guess as well. I have been told I should give you a grandma's family recipe. I thought I could give you a grandma's family recipe in the style of maybe what Occupy needs. A touch of this and a sprinkle of that. Um, If I was to make up this recipe off the top of my head. um, Grandma's secret recipe to Occupy. Compassion. We need a big dose of compassion. God, what next? Um, compassion. What goes with compassion really nicely? Compassion. Ah, what I'm thinking of is a big beef stew, and it's warm and hearty, and it's and it, there's always enough to share with everybody, and it's got a beautiful dose of red wine to it, sautéed down to give it that rich. That rich warmth that we all deserve as hard walking, walking, hard working people of Occupy. Um, that's, that's all I've got so far as a big beefy stew. If I can sum that up as a grandma's secret recipe to Occupy. I know I haven't gone into the details, but we're thinking about our celebrations for six months here in Sydney Occupy, and, and as a person that's been here as day one. God, to reminisce over the last six months is, is absolutely beautiful. We've had, we've met so many people and had such an amazing community feeling to it all. Just getting to know the people of Sydney who are on the same sort of wavelength and the same level, and then expanding it more and and you know different people travelling from different occupies around Australia, around the world, and just. Knowing that there's fucking hope out there, sorry. <laughs> Knowing that there's hope out there, that, you know, we're not alone in these thoughts. It's, it's off the dinner tables, it's, it's out of the, the thoughts of our minds before we're going to sleep, and it's now onto the streets, and we're trying to keep it on the streets and keep it going. And, and six months, man, six freaking months. I didn't even think I was going to be here at Occupy. I came to see a man with a flag, you know, and he was a mate of mine. And that happens to be Chris's dad, Panda, you know, and, and Panda's still here and I've known him since he was 15 sort of thing. So there's just, 
Congratulations for making it six months to everybody. It's it's a mad, mad effort, you know. We ah, rejoice in that. Remember what it's given us. How much strength have we all grown within us, you know, to stand up and say, you know what, you're a douche, you're doing that wrong. I'm sorry. I love you as a being, but come along with us and enjoy this ride and grow and be beautiful and respect to the world man and respect to mother nature and the earth and all the joys of life i guess peace